Front brakes still work pretty good on this thing, I see. Does he drive sometimes? He drives? Woo! This thing's meant for winning races. Willie dubbed it from the corner to right here. He <laughs> so what would Hoodies be without a little bit of history? All right, ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, you know who it is. It is your least favorite motor vlogger, Brian 636, reporting live from the south side of Chicago. We are on Marquette and Stony Island, and welcome to episode 63. Today, I'm on a bike that I haven't ridden in a really freaking long time, my 2019 CRF 450R Supermoto. Last time I was on this, I was actually out on the track for Aprilia race days, and they let me take this thing on the track. It was an absolute blast. I got to try out all their new bikes. Just a really fun time. I hadn't been on a track in a long time, and now, I'm back on it for Hood Eats. So like I said, we are on the south side and today we are going to the neighborhood of South Shore. Today we're going back to a restaurant that I haven't been to in years, years, years for the infamous corned beefs AP Deli on 75th. Without further ado, we are in Woodlawn and we're gonna head a little bit farther south down the South Shore and go eat and explore this neighborhood a little bit. Let's do it. Have a good day. This is a neighborhood I've never done on Hoodie Eats before. Woodlawn, definitely another one that's overdue. I need to, I just need to go get down to the south side more and more and more. That's the truth, man. Been traveling a lot lately. Lean back was last week, so your boy is absolutely tired AF of riding. But you guys know I had to get out and do a Hoodie Eats. This thing is as torquey as the Suron, man. That's all I gotta say. Jump the damn speed bumps. <laughs> All right, you know somebody just ran into that garage one night. Dear God, knocked it right off the frame. I'd be so pissed. Front brakes still work pretty good on this thing, I see. Beep, beep. <laughs> so like I was saying, we're up in the neighbor to the north of South Shore, which is Woodlawn. And we just gotta go a little bit farther down south to we are in the South Shore. And I cannot wait to tell you guys about this neighborhood just because I think a lot of people don't know about the east side of Chicago because South Shore is technically the east side of Chicago. Anything, you know, east of Lakeshore Drive and Stony Island is technically the east side of Chicago. So if you're like me, most people think, you know, the east side of Chicago is the freaking lake. Well, there is an east side. It's just, you know, the east of Stony and Lakeshore Drive. Lane split. Excuse me, Kia. Hello. Is he gonna bite me? No? <laughs> That's a girl? That's a boy? Hey buddy, how are you? <laughs> Does he drive sometimes? He drives? <laughs> Woo! This thing's meant for winning races off that damn line. So you can take 90 East right here to go straight to Indiana or you can stay local and head east to the east side. South Shore, East Chicago. There's very few neighborhoods that are actually technically east. God, is it nice to be back in Chicago just doing a regular hood eat by myself, not having to worry about 120,000 behind me. It's just nice. No offense, guys. It, it is kind of just like babysitting, you know. Turn left onto 79th Street and or the 9, as a lot of Chicagoans call it. It's a, just a huge uh, artery that runs through a lot of south side neighborhoods. And just like that, we are in South Shore. Beautiful, beautiful South Shore. Some beautiful black power murals there. 79th really does run through a lot of uh, the South Side's biggest neighborhoods. And it is just that. It's a huge connecting vein through a lot of places. And it's home to a lot of these neighborhoods' business districts or once former glorious business districts. As you can see, South Shore's business district is pretty rough shape, guys. It really is. So with that being said, let's get a little bit into history about this place. Currently, South Shore has continuously moved up in the ranks in Chicago's deadliest neighborhoods, and last year ranked as Chicago's fourth deadly neighborhood, surpassing Humble Park, North Lawndale, and some of these other mega violent neighborhoods that are typically on the west side, and South Shore has been steadily creeping up on them, which unfortunately is the case down here. Last year in 2022, South Shore had 174 people shot, 42 people killed and 132 people wounded. Almost one person a day just in this neighborhood. And this neighborhood is one of the smallest neighborhoods in the whole city. It only runs in between 67th Street and 79th. You do the math, that's 12 blocks, man. I don't think we've seen an open business since we've been on 79th down here uh, in South Shore. As we cross over Yates, we go into a part of this neighborhood called Terror Town. To the right is a really famous McDonald's for anyone who's really into the Chicago rap scene. G Herbo had a huge beef there. There's no live. Damn, why you back there? He'll work here. Yeah. Where you going? He'll work here. Yeah. He'll work yeah. We ain't no civil time. We all good, shorty. Shorty, y'all good. We finna get some big deals, shorty. 
They used to do hood vlogs around here before any of these rappers had really glowed up. This is when, you know, King Vaughn, Dirk, Herbo were all in high school. There was a pretty infamous shooting that happened at that McDonald's. Turn left into this subsection of the neighborhood called Terror Town. It runs in between 79th and 75th, in between Colfax and Yates. So Yates is to your west, Colfax is to the east, 79th to the south, and 75th to the north. And this little four block by four block area really became synonymous with violence. Oh, this guy wants a wheelie, huh? Does that work for you? Yes, sir. I'm down here filming. I'm going to AP Deli on 75th. Go get a corned beef sandwich. How long have you guys been down here for? Your whole life? Yeah. I'm from I'm from out west. This is technically Terror Town, right? Right here? This is, yeah. 79th to 75th and then Yates to Colfax. Right? Yeah, just like four block by four block, right? Cool. Have you guys ate at AP Deli before? The corned beef sandwiches up there or no? Yeah. Yeah? It's the best corned beef in all the city, man. It's really good. <laughs> Appreciate it, guys. Be safe out here, yeah? He said, this ain't technically Terror Town. This is Terror Town. <laughs> so basically, this four block by four block area really became infamous in the 90s and early 2000s for just being an ultra violent part of South Shore. Now, South Shore was not always like this. South Shore up until the 80s was an actually middle class, peaceful African-American neighborhood. Throw yourself back into 1980s and 1990s Chicago, and what we had here were ultra-violent mega projects. I'm talking about Cabrini Green. I'm talking about Robert Taylor at Holmes. I'm talking about the big one. We had tens of thousands of ultra-poor families living all within the confines of one another. As we all know, those were a complete failure. And the politicians knew this as well. So when they tore down these mega projects in the late 90s and early 2000s, they had to rehome a lot of these people. So they gave them subsidized housing. And when they did that, they really, really, really screwed over the middle class blacks that lived here in this neighborhood. South Shore quickly became the subsidized housing capital of the city. That means all these multifamily houses and apartment complexes you guys are seeing down here, look at my guy in the back of the truck, all became subsidized housing for some of Chicago's not only poorest, but also some of Chicago's most deadly gang members at the time. Terror Town really did encompass a lot of Chicago's worst all within that little four block by four block area because that entire section is nothing but multifamily and apartment complexes all just stacked on top of each other. So as this happened, a lot of these middle class African Americans and white business owners started to flee the neighborhood as violence and drugs just began invading their once peaceful and tranquil neighborhood. And I want you to see this neighborhood on a map. Its location is prime, it's gold. It's right next to the lakefront, it's right next to Lakeshore Drive. You're like a five minute drive to downtown. And you had really nice houses down here, and you still do on some of these blocks. However, a lot of this neighborhood has fell into disrepair. What do we got here? A little promethazine bottle, huh? Albert Williams. Forgot your promethazine over here on uh, 76th and Yates in Terratown, buddy. Beautiful, beautiful day out. A little bit of overcast. The fit goes hard too. Don't mean to gas myself up, but I'm looking good. So what would Hoodies be without a little bit of history? I know I kind of went ass backwards there with giving you guys some of the violence first and some of the modern day stuff that's happening there. But let's talk about South Shore and how it really became this neighborhood. In the 1850s, this piece of land was used by one or two farmers because the soil down here was great for planting. It had the lakefront trail that ran right in the downtown to the markets, right to the north, which is now Lakeshore Drive. So this real estate was truly gold for the few farmers that did not have it here. As Chicago began to grow, so did this neighborhood. German, Jewish, and Swedish all began to flock here in droves 
for the vicinity of the lake, the work that was quickly becoming available to them here, and because this was just a beautiful place to raise a family. Now, this neighborhood actually stayed German, Jewish, and Swiss for a long time, all the way up until 1948. Now, why 1948? With World War II coming to a close, the Supreme Court actually ruled sanctuaries unconstitutional. Now, what this did was basically just keep white neighborhoods white, blacks black, and they ruled that unconstitutional. Now, why is this so important for this neighborhood? Because in 1948, as soon as that did get lifted, a lot of middle class and wealthy African Americans began moving in here. And you know what? For a long time, this was about a 50-50 neighborhood where 50% was African American and about 50% was white. Now, what changed and why did this happen? It can all get attributed back down to blockbusting. And I know I've covered this before in a few other hood eats when I've talked about the South Side, but it is just something that did affect so many of these neighborhoods. In 1968, after the Martin Luther King riots, after Martin Luther King had been assassinated, a lot of predatory real estate agents came into these neighborhoods and started knocking on these same homes, telling the white owners that your property value is about to go to hell. Get out, get out while you can. We'll give you X amount of dollars for it. It's only going to go down. African Americans are going to run this place into a ghetto. Get out while you can. And what did they do to the incoming African Americans? Basically promised them that these jobs, schools, and businesses that existed here were still going to be there in the next 10, 20, 30 years when they came in. So this turned into a middle class African American neighborhood. And the economy was actually really healthy up until what we talked about earlier. Those early 2000s, when the Daly administration started funneling some of Chicago's most violent individuals into this neighborhood by the bucket load. So bad politics basically tried to cover up more bad politics. These policies drove this neighborhood into what it is today. It drove it into a neighborhood where 174 people are shot every year, a place where that has become on a daily, and it's a very small neighborhood again. So it is sad to see how, you know, bad politics and bad policies can affect middle class white, middle class, African Americans, middle class, anybody, at the end of the day, the politics that write these policies and do these things are not the ones in these neighborhoods and suffering once once these things are in place. Because you know Mayor Daley would never put, you know, the subsidized housing capital of the city in his neighborhood. Why would he do that? So he dumped them into a thriving middle class African American neighborhood. And it's just sad because now, now look, I mean, there's literally entire apartment buildings, entire blocks that are abandoned down here. And uh, there's really no good reason other than the violence drove a lot of these people out. Because the economy once was really great here. 79th was thriving. There were small businesses. And we just can't say that anymore because it just doesn't exist. Empty lap. Beep, beep. I'm off road. I said, ride that motherfucker, ride that. I'm trying, goddammit. I said, ride that bitch. I'm trying to ride it, man. <laughs> all this history and talking and memorizing all this stuff has made your boy hungry. Let's go get something to eat. Go ahead, little kitties. Pop a wheelie. Shift a second. Shift locked in the second. Drop back. Scrape. No. Drop back. Scrape. There we go. <laughs> I love this thing, man. It is such a powerhouse, a torque monster. <laughs> Woo! They having too much fun. So I'm about a wheelie and a bike revving up in the streets, just like the universal language of happiness and fun you know and it's crazy too because this is literally like i talked about before where one of chicago's greatest rappers came out of g Herbo. i don't have nearly enough time to cover the gang beefs that have happened down here or the history behind it or where g Herbo really does come from but just know that this neighborhood is home to um, a huge faction of the gangster disciples as well as the black peace stones those are kind of the ruling gangs down here on chicago's east side and they have been for years you know present day 2023 are big gangs really a thing anymore not really, they're mostly sub clicks. Just huge, huge, huge vacant stretches all up and down South Shore. Just places where businesses once stood, families were raised, and now it's uh, kind of desolate, man. 75th is extremely desolate too, just like uh, 79th. Those are the two major arteries that run through here, 79th and 75th. Stoppy. Blew the stop sign. JJ's fish and chicken. I'm not a fan of JJ's, man. They are everywhere, but I'm not a fan of them. I don't even think I've done one for a hoodie. That's how least of a fan I am of them. I'm just not liking them. What do you guys think? I need a little bit of a cool down. Woo! Oh, man. 
<laughs> the bike was hot and so was I. <laughs> the kid's like, what are you doing? You just took a perfectly dirt, good dirt bike through the water. Oh, and perfect, here's our food stop, AP Deli. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right, let's go check it out. AP Deli, I'm so excited for this one, guys. These are great. I did one down on 108th in Michigan about three years ago, and I have not been back since. Here we are. Could I have the original corned beef combo? Yes, please. I'll do chips. Barbecue. Strawberry. All right, cool. Thank you. Get some. Three, five. My ticket number is 35. Look at baby, she's all wet. Why are you all wet on me? <laughs> Guys, I am absolutely beat after last week. Oh, I can't believe this. How many hoodies have I fucking done? My guy's got a Cubs jersey on just like me. Beautiful. Sammy fucking Sosa. Yeah, throwback, throwback. All right, man. Oh, I am so beat. Overall, I mean, I can't complain though, you know? Everyone was really respectful. No one died. Obviously, accidents happen. That's to be expected on a stunt ride. But overall, man, to get that many people in the city and it be really respectful and, you know, it goes smoothly as it did, I can't complain. And uh, knock on wood, second year in a row, we haven't even made the news. I think they're giving us the, the go-ahead on this, boys. Just, you know, don't f*** with all the palooza. You know, work with the cops and they tell you something and, you know, conduct yourself like men like we did. And I think we're good. This thing needs a new chain bad, dude. I'm going to go to a little shop on uh, Harrison and Central and probably get a chain here. <laughs> Thank you so much. I know it's been a long time since I've been down here, so I appreciate it. I appreciate it for real. Oh yeah? Thank you. Got a combo with chips and a drink, cup of bag with chips. Thank you, man. I appreciate you guys, man. No problem, man. Appreciate y'all. Absolutely. I'm gonna be popping wheelie right now. You gonna pop a wheelie on this? You wanna ride it? I ain't ready for what you You wanna? It's a big one. Yeah, I ain't ready for it. You're not ready for that? I think you are. Have you rode a bike before? Fuck that. That would be kind of funny though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. So when we come back on a wheelie, it shoots shoots sparks and it doesn't eat up the plastic. This is the hardest metal on, on earth, titanium. It holds up a long time. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. Super good as always, man. Melt in your mouth. This corned beef always just melts in your mouth. My favorite corned beef sandwich in Chicago. I said it three years ago, I'll say it again. Top notch. 75th and uh, what is it? 75th and, and Greek Air and 108th in Michigan. Bingo, dude. 150th in Dixie, but that's not Chicago, that's Dalton. Okay. So your two places in Chicago, 75th and Craigery and 108th and Michigan. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. I'm gonna tear into this, guys. Oh. I'm disgustingly full. They gave me the big beef. They saw it was me, they gave me the big beef. That is something that I don't think I'll ever get used to, man. People like trying to offer you free stuff or recognizing you or something like that. That's no matter how much it happens, it's still kind of crazy. And I always feel awkward. Cool though. The fact that a restaurant that I did three years ago on Hood Eats, it was like episode, you know, 12 or 13, recognized me and tried to pay for my food. Crazy. I know I've said another hoodie, and I'll say it again, man. I hope you guys realize why I do these videos by now. I, I give you those statistics. I show you the neighborhood. I show you what's going on. And then I bring you to a beautiful restaurant with amazing people with some of the best food in the world. What I'm trying to do is say, don't just not go somewhere because someone else told you not to, or don't limit yourself or say, not my neighborhood or something like that, you know? Go support small local business. Go support a small local restaurant. You'll be surprised, man. You will be surprised. Heading northbound on Stony now. Cruising. Cruising through, through the South Shore neighborhood. 71st. My guy just blew the run. The L literally runs right here, right along 71st. Just had to be back out on a bike in Chicago. Just chilling, man. Just chilling. Big chilling. Baba's famous steak and lemonade. That's a pretty good spot. I've been there before. 
So this is like the opposite of Terror Town before I close up this hoodie. It's in between 71st and 67th, the very north end of South Shore is in extremely good shape. So much so that there's multi-million dollar homes up here. But right along with it are boarded up homes. I really wonder how long this part of the neighborhood will exist like this. Jackson Park, man. This is a happening ass place on a Friday or Saturday night here in the summer. Jackson Park, not by the golf course, but closer to the lake, happening ass spot. See that, look at all the golfers out here. To the north side of South Shore, just that little four block area, like the opposite of Terror Town. You know, Terror Town is the south end of the, of the neighborhood. Jackson Park, I think it's called the Highlands, that little four, four block area, is the opposite. We got a golf course right here. People driving around golf carts and geese, gooses. I see some gooses out there. As out of 67th, I left South Shore and I am in the beautiful, beautiful part of Rainbow Beach, just along the lakefront here. On my way back out of South Shore. Give the video a like. It's the easiest, simplest way to support my channel, support my content. I know you guys, if you made it to the end, you probably liked it, maybe. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe. Hello, Mr. Cop, how the hell are you? doing it for such a long time now it just feels so natural just talking to you guys it feels so natural at least for a model vlogger telling you guys to respect life